Hello again. We will continue demystifying uh, the mesh. <laughs> Let's see. Um, we need to factor this into different functions to call let's see i'm uh, i'm thinking about making each level there are two possibilities making each level um, have its own procedural wall or to have one big procedural wall for for all the game uh, but I'm, I'm not sure because I want to be able to move the levels around but for now let's make one big procedural wall and let's add it a class name proc wall for example, and have here an um, export bar proc wall. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the player is assigned to reference, and uh, each time we load a level, we will pass it the proc wall and here uh, load data yes load data will receive the proc wall ah, also let me check the coordinates for the proc wall because yeah i i put it with an offset, yeah, because the coordinates we will use uh, are integers, but the procedural wall need to be uh, offset uh, by one half, yes, okay. Now, in the, in the level, yeah, we load data, okay now the procedural mesh let's let's uh, let's rename let's rename the script because i don't think this breaks anything let's see ah yes Okay, now this will have hmm, this will be a global variable, uh -huh. this will be function begin. Feeling ready, we will not do anything. Okay, this, uh, let's see. Ah, this will be its own function add cell or add wall. Mm. Let's call it add cell because. because the wall is the entire thing and each cell will be okay and this we will call n mm -hmm. generate normals okay what's this Parameter pro wall is never used. Okay. <laughs> Patience. <laughs> uh, 
let's see um, this is gone now when we call begin obviously in the player before loading any levels mm -hmm. now uh, the add cell we will call ah the end in the end we call the end for uh, after we load all levels mm -hmm. And this function will be called with global coordinates for each level. So we will have to be careful here. Okay, when we instantiate, let's see if we remove this prefab. Okay, we instantiate it there. Mm -hmm. we will call add cell and this is the post okay mm, we will could we could call it with a uh, With a, hmm. It's a bit redundant, but perhaps it's clearer from the user perspective. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, this is an integer, integer, ah, we are creating vector tree, okay, never mind, now, uh, we we'll prefer, not declare, ah, obviously, <laughs> now, uh, we add the cell, let's see, obviously this is wrong, property key name ah obviously yeah <laughs> because we are we are not uh, creating anything here um mm -hmm. yeah the A here refers to the lava. Uh -huh. Let's call it lava. And uh, uh -huh. we have this problem here that the walls <clears throat> array is an array of node 3D but we will use <clears throat> sorry we will have to use an array of points check we use it hmm yeah this is a problem we are the ones because uh, this is used uh, here in the function that searches for for things uh -huh. but this is only used to check for for null so 
perhaps we will uh, replace this hmm. because think at let's see uh, when we use it yeah we will we check for null we check for null we check for null yeah so here we can replace this by a set of back tree e and uh, mm, we push the position ah sorry this uh, this should be the global position of the level which is a problem because we don't know the global position of the level at this point or or do we <coughs> when we create a level uh -huh. when we load the level hmm. no we assign the global position later okay this is interesting in fact <clears throat> we could have uh, sorry we could have um, here sorry here a function an offset yeah and we could add the offset here hmm it's a bit dirty but uh, it should work let's see if we before loading the level we initialize this We initialize this. We don't. Uh, no, this this is correct. But okay. Yeah. Hmm. Load level should receive this. Load data, yeah, it's, it's much, it's much, uh, much clearer. Yeah. And let me. Create a variable here and call position. Mm -hmm. And load level will receive here. The global position and the load data. Will receive sorry here will receive this parameter and use it here. 
Okay. Now we have obviously all these uh, errors because this function must be replaced by uh, replaced by the yeah. Sorry. Uh, mm. What's the matter with this? Sometimes the ah, this uh, this is not <laughs> this is not necessary because we have we have um. Mm -hmm. Sorry. Uh -huh. We can uh, check for the okay. I think below is in group ah yeah this is a problem hmm. ah no this is not a problem because we can we can replace this with another uh, uh, return mm -hmm. yeah we can replace this uh, sorry here with another array of lavas and if we instantiate the lava we don't need uh, well we need to add uh, hmm. yeah it's a bit uh, a bit dirty but it should work now we have other uses this checks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. not equal null uh -huh. well, let me Pause the recording here because this change is a bit uh, okay. We have uh, replaced all the uses for the thing at for the walls and the lavas. So this should hmm, let's let's check. Okay, we are uh, severely severely offset, <laughs> but it's. <laughs> okay, let's see. Position. Mm -hmm. What happened here? We are in the first level. The logic, the logic works. No, it doesn't work. Let's check the errors here. Attempt to push back a variable of type object into type array of type vector tree. Ah, yeah, obviously. Uh, we are using. Yeah, this is this is bad. This is very bad uh, because the obviously the B here represents the entry prefab. 
and the entries are walls so we need to add the mm -hmm. what else condition ah this is only the creation i think no we have more errors uh -huh. ah. this is the position yeah now let's try again okay we don't have errors and the logic seems to work okay but the offset here is a bit uh, interesting why why are we in the other direction hmm this is weird okay the logic here seems to work but we are instantiating things uh, let's see the global position ah yeah this was a negative value i think okay mm -hmm. okay now we are instantiating as before but uh, we are yeah here <laughs> yeah we will need to use uh, the old logic plus one plus one and this inversion uh, change the chirality so we need to swap yeah all right let's see perfect okay now obviously this works but we are a bit um, flat with the walls the walls now are only one quad and what all uh, let all other objects are 3d as you see so uh, perhaps it's not important because uh, the game is inherently 2d but we like the 3d appearance appearance of, of certain things what happened here ah yeah yeah this is the perspective yeah obviously okay it, this works for now but um, we will have to add uh, some perspective to the to the walls later let's uh, test first what happens if we instantiate many levels like before we have 900 levels and obviously this uh, this will tax the animation system because there are many sigils but hmm, yeah i suspect that the the animations are still because we are, we have one eternal twin twinner for each uh, for each sigil but let's try again because sometimes the fps if fps calculations are a bit uh, a bit wonky let's see okay now almost 60 fps yeah and in map mode it drops a bit 
but it's almost 60. Okay. And on Linux, but uh, it's uh, generally slower for the rendering. So this procedural mesh obviously helped. Next step uh, is to do the animations only when we are in a level and delete or, or stop the animations when we are in map mode, for example. Uh, that will help a bit more and uh, add the remaining uh, quads to the walls uh, to make them truly 3D. That should be should be nice. Okay, let's stop here for now. Uh, this is a good progress. Thanks for watching. You can always comment comment uh, or use the links below to to support me. Thanks.